before we get into any of the escapes, I want to talk a little bit about some of the defensive movements. So when you guys that are here, you guys drilled. Uh, but some of the key movements and kind of concepts of these movements. Basically, what positionally I want to maintain when I am underneath some position, right? An important principle to understand is like the mount is a bad position if you're underneath, right? Like that is, you know, pretty basic, right? Pretty understandable. So I cannot approach the mount the way that I approach a neutral or offensive position in the sense that I have to be very careful. I have to be very measured. I could just theoretically bridge and flip them over, right? You know, if I'm strong or big. But in terms of universally being able to be successful at preventing yourself from getting submitted and then getting out of the mount against, you know, mid intermediate to high level grapplers, the solution basically lies in patience and understanding of what positionally I need to prevent them from doing and what positionally I have to make sure I force to happen. So I could just hop in here. I need to make sure that my opponent stays directly in front of me in a parallel set, like angle uh, and low on my body. These are the conditions that are basically imperative. Now we can make some adjustments to that if we find ourselves in these situations where like they have an angle or they're high on my chest, but all I, there's really no reason for that to ever happen too much because if I keep my elbows in tight, my hands up next to my neck, uh, if he tries to shift to the high mount, or tries to shift the high mount, I'm just gonna go with him. You see what I'm saying? Likewise, if he does get to the high mount, go ahead. I'm just going to press down and walk, just as we did in the drill. An important nuance to understand here as well is that, like, this is what I don't want to do. Sort of see This is what I don't want to do. Go ahead and get the high mount. Ah! Right. The second he settles his weight, like once he's dropped down and he's settled, the escape here is going to be much more difficult. He's going to be starting to look for offense that I'm going to have to respect because I'm in a bad defensive position. Okay? What I want, let's see you go back. He's here. He gets to the high mount. I don't let him maintain it. Right? I immediately am firing that recovery. I want to keep my feet close to my butt. Right? As we rotate. We'll just keep the third one. I want to keep my feet close to my butt. I want to control the inside of this mount until I decide to control the outside. But it's not like I'm hanging out out here. If I hang out out here, they can break mine, they can do all sorts of stuff, and we find ourselves right in these sorts of situations. So I want to keep my feet close to my butt, keep my feet on the inside of his feet. I have them low on my body, I have my feet close to my butt. If you start trying to get an angle, it's an S mount. Okay, once again, if he gets all the way to this S mount, well, now I'm in an arm bar situation. I can circle back. Right? But I'm still with an armbar. He's kind of nailed up the deed, so if he keeps circling with me, like, he might just get to the armbar faster than I can get out of it. But if, as he's going for that S mount, I just keep that alignment. I force this, this uh, uh, parallel angle to constantly be represented back at him. This is the key to just like basic mount defense. Obviously, my hands are up by my neck, so if he tries to reach in for collars, I should be able to swap them off. Okay? I want to make one other note about this, and then we'll move on to some technique. Uh, let me get you just standard mount. Unless I'm specifically initiating a counter, I never, ever, ever want to like try to hold on to something of my opponent's, right? So if I'm here, and like let's say you start reaching for a collar, I don't want to like try to get wrist control and block his arm, right? So me locking myself to him, if he starts making adjustments <coughs> and going, let's say, for the arm bar, this is where I'm going to get caught, is committing myself to this thing. My defense of these collar chokes, of the, him progressing, is I'm just getting it out of the way and recovering back to this neutral position. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? That's pretty straightforward, right? Um, let's see. What I'm going to do is, Tony, I'm going to have you end the video in a second. Uh, like I'll call break. Mm -hmm. We've already drilled all this stuff out, so we don't need to drill it again. But I'm going to keep this as its own thing, and then we'll go into the technique. So, anybody have any questions? Let's not partner up. One, two, three. Oh, break.